Hello then my friends, hope you all are having a fantastic day right now. In this video, we shall be looking at how we can build a Sudoku solver using Python. So let's get started. So in order to build a Sudoku solver, we need to first understand what a Sudoku is. So a Sudoku is a puzzle which has 81 cells which are arranged in 9 rows and 9 columns just like that. And there are also 9 different boxes which hold 9 cells each. And the objective of this problem is to fill a cell with the numbers from 1 to 9 such that the number does not occur in the same row or in the same column or in the same box. So that's how the Sudoku should be solved. And we are going to build a solver for this. So having understood the rules of the Sudoku puzzle, we can go ahead and look at how we can build a solver for this. So the approach that we will be using is called the recursive backtracking algorithm and if you have watched my previous video on the n queens problem then you would know what this algorithm means so this algorithm is a really simple one which attempts to solve the sudoku in one shot so let's look at how we can apply the recursive backtracking algorithm in our case so the first thing that we would want to do is to find a cell which is empty so in this case Assuming that we will be starting from the first position and move all the way to the last position, the first empty cell that we find is this cell. And once we have found that cell, then we can check the possibilities for that cell. So in this cell, according to the rules, we cannot have 5, 3 or 7 because they occur in the same row as the cell. And we also cannot have 8 because it occurs in the same column. And we also cannot have 6 or 9 because they occur in the same box. So these sets of numbers are eliminated from our possibilities. Hence, this cell can only be filled in three ways. That is 1, 2 or 4. So our algorithm needs to find which of these is the correct solution. So first it assumes that 1 is the best solution and moves forward and starts filling the cell and so on and it keeps finding empty cells and tries to fill all the cells till no empty cell is found. So when are we going to use backtracking? So the backtracking part will come if there is no possibility for a cell. So now we have assumed that out of 1, 2 and 4, 1 is the correct solution and we move forward and find the next empty cell that is this and try to fill in this cell but we find that there are no possibilities for this cell which means the one that we have put here doesn't work so that is the wrong entry and we need to change it so we backtrack erase this one and put in the next possibility that is two and then we again move forward and if we again find no possibilities for the cell then we'll again backtrack erase this two and put in 4 and now at this stage if we move forward and try to fill the cell then we should be able to do it because then we will have at least one possibility so that is how we are going to solve it and at this stage also we don't have a possibility then that means that the sudoku is wrong and it is unsolvable so that is how we are going to approach this problem so having understood how the backtracking algorithm works we can go ahead and implement it in python so here we are in python and i have already created a python file for us to work with and now we can get started with building our solver so first we will need to have a 9 cross 9 board which we will be implementing using a two dimensional list so i'm going to call it board just like that so we are going to initialize each and every cell with zero initially and we will take the numbers as input from the user. So that's that. And next we will be writing our first function that is the print board function. Just like that. So all this function is doing is just print the board of 9 rows and 9 columns onto the screen. So let's call this function and check how it works. So yep, clean. And now we need to implement the next function which is to find if a cell is empty so find empty okay. 
we are going to traverse through the board and we are going to check if the entry is zero and if it is zero we are going to return the row and the column so we are going to identify a cell by its row and column so we are going to return so that's the function so if we call find empty now it should return zero zero just like that because the first element is zero so that works so the next function that we will be writing is called the check validity function and this function will check if a certain number is possible at a certain position so check validity and we'll take the number as an argument and the row and the column of the number as an argument so in this function we will be checking if the number doesn't occur in the same row or in the same column that is this or in the same box so those are the constraints which we will be checking in this function so for i in range 9 if board of row comma i equals equals num then we will be returning false and that means that the number is not possible at that particular cell and the same must be done for the column 2 so i comma column so yeah so next we will have to check if the number occurs in the same box so for that there is a trick and let's look at this to understand what it is so let's consider this box right here and let's say we are at this position and we are to check if the number occurs in the box so we will have to scan from this cell all the way till this cell so if it occurs in any one of these cells then we have to return false so the simplest way to do that is to first find the index of this cell so how are we going to do that that can be done by taking the absolute index of the cell and dividing it by 3 so what does this give us so this gives us the index of the box so for example if we want to find the index of this cell then its absolute index will be 3 comma 0 because it occurs in the third row and in the zeroth column so when we divide this by 3 we get 1 and this is integer division so we have to consider only the quotient so 3 by 3 is 1 and 0 by 3 is 0 so this is the index of the box so as you can see this box will be at the index 0 0 this will be 0 1 this will be 0 2 and this will be 1 0 so that is the index of the box and once we know the index of the box we can iterate three steps here and three steps here and complete the iteration process so let's implement that so first let's find the row index and the column index of the box so i equals row by 3 and j equals column by 3 and now we can start our for loop so for m in range i comma i plus 3 for n in range j comma j plus 3 then if board of m n equals num return false so that's it we have checked for the row column and the box and if we pass all these tests and we do not return false then we'll have to return true which means that number is possible at that particular position so that completes the helper functions and now we have got to write the main solver function so solve sudoku so this is a recursive function and you need to pay attention to understand this so the first thing that we are going to do in the solve sudoku function is to find an empty cell so before doing that we'll have to change the find empty function a little bit so that we can handle the case where the board is solved and there's no empty cells so in that case we'll be returning minus one minus one which is an invalid index so first we'll be calling find empty here and we'll set row call so these are the temporary variables equals find empty so if row equals minus one and call equals minus one then we'll be returning two which means the 
solution has been formed. Else, what we'll do is, we will loop through the numbers from 1 to 9 and check if any of these numbers are possible and move on. So, for i in range 9, check validity, i, row, and call. So, you're going to do this and this is going to return either true or false. So, if this is true, which means i is possible at that particular position, then board row call equals i. We are going to enter it into our board. Next, what we'll do is, we'll call this solve Doku function recursively. So, why are we doing this? So, when we do this, what we want to achieve is to move immediately to the next cell and find an empty cell and carry on this process again. And that is why we are going to recursively call this. And by recursively calling this, if we arrive at the solution, that is, if solve Sudoku is true, then we'll just return true and come out of this, which means the board is solved. And now comes the backtracking part. So, what will happen if we fill, say, the first empty cell with a number and then call this function and we come here and we loop through all the numbers from 1 to 9 and we find that no solution is possible. Then that means we have made a mistake in the previous entry. So, in such a scenario, this function won't return true and we'll handle that later when it should return false. But the first thing that we would want to do is set the previous value to 0 because that was not a valid entry. So, yeah. Now, when will the function return false? That will be done when you look through all the possibilities and there is no solution possible. And in such a case, we will be at this position and so we will finish the else statement so we'll just return false over here and yeah that completes our solve sudoku function so now all we're going to do is call the solve sudoku function on our sudoku and it is sure to work so let's go ahead and give the input so as you can see here i filled the board with the numbers from this example and now our algorithm should be able to solve the sudoku. So let's check all the functions and see if they are correct. So, hmm. so here we are trying to use the index of the box, but that is not the starting index of the box. So the starting index can be obtained by multiplying the index of the box by 3. And the same goes for this too. So, this should solve our problems. So, now we are iterating through the nine cells in the box and finding if the number is valid. And here, for i in range 1, 10, because we want the numbers from 1 to 9 and not from 0 to 8. So, that's the thing. And we can now call the solve sudoku function and the print board function to see the results. So let's check this out. Yep, we got the solve sudoku and as you can see every column has the numbers from 1 to 9, every row has the numbers from 1 to 9 and all the boxes are filled too. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All the code and the required stuff will be on my github. Make sure that you check that out too. So that's it. Bye for now guys and I'll see you guys in the next video.